All right, so I've had a little bit of trouble out of the the dream recently. Nothing major. I've just not been able to get full pressure um, whenever I'm pulling a shot, which it's kind of weird because it doesn't seem to be the pump. Um, whenever I use like a blind basket, it builds pressure no problem and hits the overpressure valve. But whenever I try to pull a shot, it's just it's not getting very high. It's maxed out like five or six bars. And so I think maybe I've got some sort of obstruction or something maybe in the line or maybe some mineral buildup. I did try to descale it, um, and I thought that worked, but then it kind of started giving me some trouble again. So I'm going to open this thing up. Um, and I figured it'd be a good opportunity to see what's inside of this thing. So now I've got the water tank out, drip trays out, everything's out. Um, and so to open the top of one of these, go ahead and unplug it. Just, I know somebody might be worried that I shocked myself, but uh, <clears throat> underneath the bottom of this, um, there are screws right here. And then there's another one over on the other side. And so uh, let me turn it like this. Yeah, so there you can see another screw. So need to undo these screws and then I can get the top off. All right, so uh, just a quick uh, tool kind of plug. This is a, a stubby multi-cline screwdriver. It's a little bitty four-way kind of electrician style screwdriver, man. Uh, this thing's super handy for stuff like this because it's real short. Um, so let's see if we can get in here on this thing. All right, so there's my screws out. Now we can get the top off. Oh, yeah. There we go. There's the inside. Now, so uh, here on the top, you can see it looks like a, a 10 watt resistive uh, heater assembly. And then here we've got the rat's nest going on up at the top. Um, so let me uh, get this. Uh, lid set off here and uh, then we'll take a good look at the interior. All right, so uh, here is the inside. Let's give it a good look. Uh, I'll try to point out what we're looking at because it is rather a rat's nest. So uh, over here, this is main control board. Now the, uh, the main wiring comes in up through the bottom up here and then it enters here. Um, they have, looks like just some kind of stabilizing capacitor you know, here on the input voltage. Uh, that uh, goes to a whole bunch of stuff in here, basically, but it comes into the board uh, over on this side. Now, the main board here, looks like that wasn't connected good for some reason. Um, main board here, and I'll try to get a light on it. Down here, come on, focus. There you go, STM32F030. So it's a STM chip. You know, look at everything else. They have a little mean well power supply uh, kicking out five volts to the board. So it's uh, coming It's coming in uh, mains voltage and then kicking it down to five volts. Now, as far as the uh, so water path down here at the back, you have this tube coming in and it comes in here and it's hard to see. But down here, there's a little uh, three way uh, T fitting here. One end of that fitting comes up here. And so this is a little flow meter. Um, and so the output of the flow meter comes into the pump. So the pump's back here. The pump's output comes under the front. Here's the OPV valve. Um, and it has a drain line coming out the bottom that goes back to that little T-fitting. So if the overpressure valve uh, gets triggered, it will drain back into the tank. Otherwise, the pressure comes out and around, and it comes uh, into, here's the uh, the boiler assembly, where, so it comes out from this tube and around and into this black solenoid valve, and so this is what's uh, controlling where the water ends up going, and so the solenoid has uh, two outlets here, it looks like. So one outlet comes through this small hard tube. This is going to be the uh, the pressure uh, pressurized water coming into the group head right here. There is a small diameter copper line that comes here, and that is for the pressure reading. Um, there's also this looks like I believe a thermocouple reading the temperature of the uh, the heater block assembly. There may be another one. I'm not sure. That may I think that's going to be the uh, the input for the power. This thermoblock's kind of neat. It has like a hard foam insulation. These things are kind of known for having really good 
um, insulation on. They stay hot for a long time, which is good or bad, depending on what you like, because once they get hot, it takes them a bit to cool off. And if you're trying to switch to uh, steam and then back to do a shot, uh, it can take it a while to cool off. So you often have to flush the hot water out of this thing because it stays hot too long. Now, uh, the other line coming out of this uh, solenoid three-way valve comes over here. It's a stainless line and it goes into the valve uh, for your steam. And so that's the water path. So I found here at the back, and it's going to be really hard to see, but down there uh, toward the bottom, I can actually see what definitely are um, the, the heating element connections. And those wires are coming out and tying in uh, back to the board. And so I'm like, I'm looking like, do they have a relay or something? And I can't find one. I can see like a bunch of, uh, let me get light on this. Uh, there's a bunch of like little power, maybe MOSFETs there, but uh, given the, the power on this thing, I don't know, maybe they are how that works. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, not really sure uh, if that thing's like mains wired and somehow being switched or if it's DC and, and they're using some sort of MOSFETs, but I would have expected with the amount of power that was going to be needed to be switched um, that they'd need like a relay or you know something else uh, there's nothing on the back of the board it looks like just a single-sided board so that's interesting i don't really i don't know i don't think i'm going to trace it out because i don't know that i care enough about that right now but that's kind of interesting just wanted to you know put that in there All right, so the uh, solenoid is made by uh, OOE, it looks like, or sorry, ODE, ODE, and uh, on the back you can see right there is their logo. It's an Italian solenoid manufacturer. Um, let me see if I can get you the model number there. All right, so that's uh, LBV05110AY. Uh, that seems to be the uh, the solenoid. It's like it's a uh, 110 to 120 volts, so it runs off a mains, uh, mains powered solenoid there. Um, and then this looks like an Alka pump. Um, you can see on the fitting right there is an Alka fitting. It's mounted in rubber, so unfortunately I can't get a, a good model number off of it, but you know, the fitting says Ulca, so I'm guessing, you know, that's an Ulca pump there. You know, if you've never heard of them, they are a fairly uh, common manufacturer of pumps, uh, vibratory pumps for espresso manufacturing. So the flow meter is uh, from a company called Digimesa. So there you go, Digimesa. I just unplugged it there, so it says I-P-S-A-C-H. I don't know if that is the uh, the model name. Um, so yeah, Digimesa is again, a kind of a known manufacturer of these little flow meters. So that seems to be who makes that. I don't see anything else that I can really get, uh, manufacturer or parts numbers or anything off of, but, uh, you know, if you ever are looking for replacement parts, uh, at least, you know, this, you can ID the manufacturer, the solenoid, you can ID the manufacturer. Uh, it's an Ulca pump. So, you know, you can potentially get uh, replacements other than direct from Ascaso USA or something, because who knows what they're upcharging. Um, I'm going to run another test because whenever I opened up this thing, this connection block was loose on this right side. Now, I've never opened this before, like the, this video. So you basically in this video saw me take the lid off. I have not messed with it before that moment. And this thing was pulled out a little bit. And on that side is... Uh, this wire and that is one of the wires to the pump so the pump wires are coming in on that side and maybe it didn't have a good connection now i'm not an electrician or an electronics engineer but i know a little bit about electricity and i don't think that would be the problem because if there was a connection problem the pump should have been cutting out i would think right i mean not having a bad connection it's like either have a connection or you don't. Um, so maybe if this thing was burnt up or something, I could say maybe that's causing a problem, but it's not. So the pump was on, it was working, it's building some pressure, not full pressure. I don't know, but um, I'm going to run another test. I'm going to grind the coffee a touch 
finer um, and see if if maybe that connection was part of the problem because I don't see anything else unless and until I start digging into um, this or either inside of the heating coil assembly that that water path or something I don't see any other obstructions I don't see anything else that would be causing the problem all right so let's do another take here and uh, I have ground a little finer I've got the pump uh, hopefully connected good I don't see any other issues so let's give it a shot Does make a bit more noise with the top off. And pressure. Not bad. See how the flow works out. Uh, still running a little fast. Pressure wasn't quite up to full speed, but you know that maybe that was it. Maybe it was just that connection for some reason. I was limiting uh, the pump somehow. I don't know. Weird. But uh, I'm getting pressure now. So, eh, no other explanation. So, uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. I'm going to call this thing uh, good to go for now. Again, uh, until further testing shows that uh, I'm going to you know, continue to have flow problems. I think it looks like that corrected it. I am surprised that it seemed as simple as just maybe a loose connection um, up there, but I don't see any other obstructions and a quick test shows me building more pressure on a faster shot than I have been the past few days. So uh, that's going to be it for now. Mostly this video, just a way to get uh, an excuse to look inside the top of this machine at the way it's built. Um, Pretty interesting. Again, very good engineering on uh, the layout because they have this thing super compact. Could they do a little bit more? Maybe. You could maybe make this thing a little smaller, but they've certainly uh, got it pretty dense in there. And so interesting to see the way they've done it. A uh, lot of good connectors on everything so that you can replace things very easily in here if it ever needs to be serviced. It looks very serviceable. It's very easy to get to everything, all the fittings and everything. Um, you know, these aren't like push fittings. You can unscrew this stuff. Um, so there's only a couple of like true push fittings. Everything else seems to be like a locking screw in style fitting. Um, so for the most part, it looks pretty serviceable too. So I'm happy about that. Um, anyway, uh, that's going to wrap up this video. Again, mostly just an excuse to look inside this thing because uh, I've been wanting to for a while, but I just never had a reason to. So this was it. Uh, anyway, if you got any thoughts, comments, or, you know, insights after looking at this thing, feel free to leave a comment down below.